What's up, guys? It's Gene, and I'm back with the Grand Finals matchup preview for all eight of our leagues. I'm sorry I missed the semifinals. I was sick and completely lost my voice, but it's mostly back now. I wanted to say congratulations to all 16 of our finalists. You guys have had awesome seasons. And to everyone but the two Premier League finalists, congratulations on being promoted to a higher league for our next season. We can't wait to have you back. Now, let's get into the leagues. We're going to start with Teal League. Looking at Teal League here in the bottom right corner, we have the New York Nitto Kings versus the Glacier Park Avalogs. And you'll see right away, we have two of the most powerful S-plus Pokemon on the board in Kyurem White and Mega Metagross. These monsters have been very strong across all of our leagues, and Teal League is no exception. Um, you'll also see really high-quality A-tier Pokemon in Chien Pao and Great Tusk for the Avalugs, and Slowking G and Goldingo for uh, the Nitto Kings. It's going to be a really close match here. Uh, neither team has a whole lot of speed. Chi and Pao is the fastest thing on this matchup. Uh, Miascarada is also pretty quick, but other than that, there's a lot of bulk on each side and not a lot of speed. Should be a really close one. Now let's start looking at our DLC picks. As you can see, five of the eight DLCs went with the Avalogs here, and maybe that makes sense because the steel typing of Mega, Mega Metagross will be really good into the ice typing of Kiram White. Um, so that might be the reason for the advantage here. I, however, am gonna go with the underdog here and make it four to five. Looks like we're expecting a really close one. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Good luck, both of you. Next, we have the Wellspring League here in blue with the Kingly Decidui versus the Denver Dugongs. And if we take a look here, this is a matchup of two S minuses, GU versus Landorus. Looks like the Decidui have a pretty cool sand team here. They have a lot of sand abusers like Excadrill, Landorus, and uh, Stoutland, as well as, interestingly, two sand setters in Mega Titar and Gigalith. Um, something really cool about this is they have Terra Rock Iron Crown, which allows it to massively boost its special defense in the sand. So that's a really cool idea. On the other side, we have uh, Tapu Fini, who can be a really potent Calm Mind Sweeper, or can be great just for utility to avoid statuses and to defog. Uh, we've got Mega Manetric for really high speed and pivots. Uh, we've got Shaman Sky for Air Slash flinches and, again, a really good speed option. Aegislash is one of my all-time favorites, a really bulky Pokemon that packs a punch. And they have a Terrifighting Bastiodon, which I have to imagine is there to, A, remove the quad weaknesses, but also for stab body presses from this thing's ridiculous defensive stat. Let's go look at our picks. Looking at our picks here, we again have a 5-3 to three split. Looks like Goes is only picking underdogs, uh, this time in favor of the Decidui. And I mentioned this in my last video, but I'm a sucker for the Sand team, so I have to throw my support behind the Decidui as well. Let's take a look at our next league. Next up, we have Cornerstone League here in gray with the New York Mankeys versus the Miami Hearth Flames. And we again have a matchup of two S-minus Pokemon, both of which happen to be Fire-type. We have Chi Yu for the second game in a row, and we've got Ogre Pawn Hearth Flame. Um, looks like the Miami Hearth Flames have a Sun team here going with Hearth Flame and Raging Bolt, as well as Screamtail and Houndoom to benefit from the Sun, and Nine Tails to set the Sun. On the other side, we've got a lot of just powerful, especially fairies at the top, in Iron Valiant and Mega Mawile, uh, both of which are really useful Pokemon here. Uh, interestingly, there's Terra Flying Glamora, which can help get hazards up on the other side, as well as Terra out of its quad-effective ground weakness uh, once it becomes flying type. On the other side, you've got Terra Water Frost Moth, which 
just gets rid of that terrible bug flying typing and gives it a generically good defensive typing um, and allows it to become a potent setup sweeper. Let's see what our DLCs went with for this match. It looks like the DLCs ended up 6-2 in favor of the Hearth Flame, really liking the team synergy with the sun that they have going here. And you know what? I agree. Let's make it 7-2. We're expecting the Hearth Flame here in the Cornerstone Championship game. Good luck, both of you. Moving to the Hearth Flame League here in red, we have Sachin and Co. versus the Royal Regilecki. And it looks like Sachin and Co. have another Sun team. They've got Walking Wake and Serilege, as well as Incineroar, who appreciate the Sun. Um, we've got Torkoal to set it. And for the first time, we have a mismatch in S tiers. We've got an S plus in the Big Turtle versus an S minus in uh, Nag over here for the Royal Regilecki. Uh, the Regilecki have some Pokemon that can benefit from the Sun too, such as Great Tusk and Intei. I think Great Tusk is going to be a really important member in this match because it not only benefits from the Sun with its ability, but also has the fighting uh, typing to help hit the turtle for super effective damage. So I think Great Tusk is going to make or break this game for the Regilecki. Again, looking at our picks, it looks like the DLCs went 6-2 and two in favor of Sachin. They really like their weather teams here, picking them each of the last three matchups. However, I'm going to go against that this time, and I'm going to pick the Regilecki to win. I think they have enough counterplay to the Sun, and Great Tusk will be the key in the match. Alright, and as we move up the skill tiers here, we're entering the Winged King League. This has a matchup between the Ottawa Senatoros and the Luscious Lopunnies. And so we're again going to see a mismatch of S tiers with an S minus Hearth Flame versus an S plus with the Big Turtle. Um, looks like the Senatoros have a snow team here with Chi and Pow and Jolteon with Terra Ice uh, benefiting from the snow. And. Both Ninetales Aloha, which also benefits from the snow, and Slowking being able to set the snow. That should be pretty easy for them to get the snow up in this match, which will give some extra bulk to their Chi and Pow, their Ninetales, and their Jolteon after it uses Terra. On the other side, uh, there's the Turtle that is always a huge threat. There's really strong Mons like Goldingo and Roaring Moon, as well as Mega Gallade. And a really cool Terra Fighting Slurpuff. I'm curious to see what that will do in the matchup. Let's go see what the DLCs think of this one. For the first time this week, we have a 4-4 split, so I'm going to have to be the tiebreaker. I think the Senatoros have too much speed and too much power between Chi and Pow and Hearth Flame, and the Low Punnies aren't going to have enough answers for long enough, so I'm going to go with the Senatoros here to win a really close one. This is one of the matches I'm most looking forward to seeing. Okay, looking at Iron Serpent, we have the Lavender Town Spirits versus Cute Hands, and this is one of the coolest matchups on paper. Take a look. Uh, each team has an S minus in Hearth Flame versus Fluttermane, but each team sort of has like a pseudo weather thing going on here. The Spirits have more weather. They went for Sun uh, with. Hearth Flame, Great Tusk, and Raging Bolt all benefiting from the sun that Ninetales sets. And it's actually Terra Grass Ninetales. I assume this is for stab solar beams in the sun. Really cool. I love that. And then on the other side, uh, Fluttermane actually does benefit from the sun, so that'll work to Cute Hand's advantage. But there's like a little bit of hail over here, or snow rather. Slow King can set the snow with Chilly Reception, and Baxcalibur is an absolute menace in the snow. It becomes really, really bulky and can set up dragon dances or swords dances and just becomes very tough to stop. This team is so cool. There's also Lilligant, which is Terra Fire, uh, which will benefit from the sun as well as Rotom Heat. So Cute Hands can kind of play a little bit into the sun game and then set up the snow as needed. Cannot wait to watch this one. Good luck, you two. And looking at the picks, it looks like 
Six of the DLCs went with Cute Hands. Gavega and Awesome Pie were the two exceptions who went with the Spirits. I'm going to join them and pick the Cute Hands. I think that there is just too much counterplay for what the Spirits want to do with the Sun. And the Cute Hands, I think, have a good matchup here. So I will be taking them as well. All right, let's take another step up to Victory League here in our second-to-last league. We have the Retro City Rampardos versus the Antarctic Heatrans. And what a matchup this is. I believe the Rampardos have only lost once, and it was a match they weren't taking super seriously. Um, and that includes beating the Heatrans in a match earlier this season, although the Heatrans did get an unlucky freeze in that match. So it'll be exciting to see the rematch. Uh, on the Rampardos side... We have an S- in Magirna, which is so dangerous for so many reasons. It's just a jack-of-all-trades. It can set hazards. It can pivot. It's also a deadly setup sweeper and just has incredible typing and makes it really hard to remove. On the Heatran side, they have one of the stronger S-pluses in Kiram White, which is just devastatingly powerful and also deceptively bulky. Um... The Heatrans also have a core between Goldingo and Hasui and Samurott, which lets them set up spikes and then keep them on the field with Goldingo's ability to prevent spin blocking and defogging. And it looks like the problem with that is that the Rampardos have Cinderace, which can actually court change, one of the only ways to remove hazards against Goldingo. So there'll be some fun hazard mind games here. As far as Terra options go, the Heatrans have been making great use of Terra Fairy Zarud, which not only turns its quad bug weakness into a resist, but also just gives it a generically good typing and fairy type. And the Rampardos have been doing great with their Terra Grass Mamoswine, uh, which does get stabbed Trailblaze, and also is just a really good type for it to switch into to kind of flip some of its weaknesses as well. That being said, I think the game ended last time with a Reverum sweep, so we'll see if it plays a huge role in this week's match as well. Good luck to both our finalists. Let's see what the DLCs make of this one. Looks like the DLCs have a pretty even 3-5 to five split here in favor of the Rampardos. It's probably due to the Cinderace being able to flip the hazard advantage that they have it set up this way. That'll be a really fun battle to see how that plays out. I am going to go ahead and continue to back my pick from the beginning, the Heatrans, to win it all. I think their roster is very strong together, and it's going to be tough to stop Kiram White. Let's see how it goes. And finally, we've reached Premier League, where we have the Pittsburgh Celesteelers versus the Cambridge Camerups. And these two teams have been almost perfect throughout the season. They were kind of just building towards this moment, so it should be a really great match. On the Celeste Steelers side, they have an S- in Nag, and on the Camerup side, they have an S- plus in Mega Lucario. Uh, the Camerups opted for a minor focus on sand. They've got Titar to set some sand, and Houndstone as well as Stoutland who can abuse the sand, but they haven't brought the sand to every match, or haven't really abused it in every match at least. So it'll be interesting to see if they want to bring Sand this week. Uh, on the Celeste Steelers' side, they have Great Tusk and Terra Normal Arcanine, who was the star of the first half of the season. Uh, Storm brought a bunch of really creative, unique Arcanine sets, and then towards the end of the season, stopped bringing it as much. So I'm wondering if he's been saving something for the finals here with Arcanine. Um, should be really fun to see play out. Also, you can't ignore Mega Bayonet which has the ability to use priority destiny bonds to kind of take out a massive threat of his choosing. So that could come as well. Also, there is Aurorus here, which could set some snow to counteract the sand. Um, although neither team really makes great use of the snow. Uh, I guess Aurorus really would be the only thing that's going to massively benefit from its own snow. Good luck, both of you. Let's see who the rest of the DLCs decided to pick. Looks like it is another close split, 3-5 to five in favor of the Camerups. 
I tend to agree that the camera ups roster is just very overwhelmingly strong and well built, and so I am going to make a pick for the camera ups here as well. But nothing would surprise me in this matchup, given how creative both of these battlers are. Should be an awesome one. Everyone needs to tune in to watch this one to see who is crowned the new king of Premier League. Good luck to everybody, and again, a huge congratulations to all 16 of our finalists. It's going to be a lot of fun this week. Make sure you guys are watching those games, and do tune in to the Happy Hour stream so that we can see as many games as possible live. I'll see you all there. Bye.